This is Grow Omaha Uncut, where you can watch our radio show, including what goes on in the commercial breaks. And be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Jeff Beals at your service. Glad you've joined us. This is the only show in the metro area that talks about construction and economic development and real estate development. You know, fun things related to Omaha becoming more vibrant, prosperous, and perhaps a little bit bigger as well. Big shout out to our sponsors. D&M Roofing, along with Dingman's Collision Center. They make all of this possible. And without any further ado, I want to bring on my co-host, a legendary real estate deal maker in the flesh, Trenton Magid. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jeff. Welcome back to the state. Um, was, I beg your pardon? Welcome. Well, welcome back. Oh, yeah. I was in Mexico for three days this week, actually more like four, uh, doing a big uh, conference for real estate companies from 15 different cities. Always uh, fun to come back home to Omaha every time I get to Epley. So, last, last night, um, after I arrived at Epley at around uh, 6 o'clock, 6.30, drove downtown and saw all the holiday lights. And uh, oh, I'll tell you, it was, it was really active. Hustle and bustle downtown, people walking in the parks. Uh, looked like the restaurants were filling up. It was, uh, it, I think it was exactly what people had in mind when uh, the donors uh, provided all of that money for the riverfront parks. We love it. It, it is just proof that uh, how goes the downtown, so goes the city. And, and people are using that huge park and, and businesses are coming in and, and growing. Well, and a little bit later, we're going to bring on Heath Mello. He is the new president and CEO of the Greater Omaha Chamber. But before we get to Heath, we're going to do our news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. Eagle Mortgage has been at it for more than 30 years, conventional, VA, FHA, some specialty mortgages. But basically, if you are thinking about making that big decision, a new house, one of the first things you want to do is go sit down with Holly Schneiderwin or one of her team members at Eagle Mortgage. You can find them online at eaglemortgagecompany.com or in person at 114th and Davenport. Go over your situation as mortgage brokers. They're not beholden to one bank, so they can find the best one for you and your situation, and then they can give you the ultimate weapon, a pre-approval letter from Eagle Mortgage that you can take into battle, especially if you are competing against other potential buyers for a house. eaglemortgagecompany.com. Trenton, the former Shopco store on the southwest corner of 144th and West Center Road will become Nebraska's first Vasa Fitness location. And this is a 62,000 square foot building. Vasa has 55 locations in eight states. But here's another example of adaptive reuse of an empty big box uh, uh, retail space. Actually, the building is closer to 90,000 feet. There's about 28,000 to 30,000 square feet on the uh, east side. There's been rumors about an indoor car wash, um, different type of uses. But uh, yeah, Vasa is also going to uh, Lincoln. And uh, congratulations to our, Kirk, our friend Kirk Hansen Jr. from Access for doing that deal. The reconstruction of South 168th Street between West Center Road and Q Street is at the halfway point. Crews are widening the stretch from two to four lanes, badly needed, and the entire project should be completed about a year from now. You're going to be happy about that. Absolutely. I live on the south side um, of Zerinsky, and uh, it's been long awaited but they're 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 cranking they're working hard on widening that bridge since we're talking about road construction let's talk about Farnham Street between 48th and Saddle Creek Road it reopened for traffic yesterday the street had been closed since late April uh, so the city of Omaha could improve traffic flow to accommodate future growth on UNMC's West Campus or sometimes people are calling it the Saddle Creek Campus but uh, if you haven't been uh, in that area looks really nice and believe me, it's going to be needed because we have more than $2 billion worth of hospital construction kicking off pretty soon. They've already started working on the core building, which will be right at the corner of Saddle Creek Road and Farnham. The Catalyst Project and the old steel plant will open next year. Big time stuff happening in that area. I just read about the new infectious diseases building, too, like $20 million. They're doing something there. Oh, from the Regents meeting yeah. uh, this week. Yeah. That's, it's just every time, every time the Regents meet, I kind of 
check the uh, the news just to see if they approved yet another thing uh, for UNMC, which means a construction project. Dr. Horton has completed the remodel of its new 18,000 square foot Nebraska divisional office at 1804 North 168th, 168th and Blondo. That's in a former uh, pet spa, the old paw spa, paw spa slash COVID testing space. I um, have different floors now. That office, good point. That office. Uh, opened November 15th. And uh, Children's Hospital West Omaha Clinic in the Coventry development, which is northwest of 100, or rather 204th, and Harrison Street is now fully enclosed. Construction work continues Just on the south interior. of uh, ACX uh, 12 plus. And we love construction cranes around here. We've been getting a lot of new ones lately. And since last Saturday's show, uh, a crane has landed at the Tanaska Center for Arts Engagement. Uh, that is the expansion on the east side of the Holland Performing Arts Center. Pretty soon we're going to be able to, we should do like a Grow Omaha Tower Crane Tour. I like it. You would be all over that. I know. I'm a construction nerd and other kinds of nerd as well. The skate ribbon at Heartland of America Park has now uh, converted into an ice skating ribbon. I haven't uh, heard about you. I want to go see that. That that is really cool. No. Me neither. But uh, when I drove by last night, there were a lot of people who were. Awesome. And and if you haven't been by the Heartland of America Park since the Christmas holiday decorations have opened, the tree that is right there is like a skyscraper, man. That is like a really tall Christmas tree they have right there by the skate ribbon. And so that, that's got to be the first of a tradition, doesn't it? I don't yeah. remember being down there. Well, there was a tree in the Gene Leahy, but it wasn't as big as this one. Uh, this one looks really cool. So, uh, tree ladies, envy. Let tree envy, ladies and gentlemen. That is your news of the week brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com. Going to take our first break of the hour. And when we come back, we're going to bring on Heath Mello. He is our new Greater Omaha Chamber president and CEO. And we're going to talk to Heath about what the chamber's doing and and a few economic development things as well. You'll enjoy the conversation. Stay with us. You're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DNM Roofing and Siding. Back in a moment, News Radio 1110 KFAB. Free iHeartRadio app is your home for the hunt. Who, who's in your, uh, who else in your office building? Is that Sherwood or is a different, is that a different building? Yeah, no, we, uh, uh, third floor is uh, Sherwood Foundation, second floor is the Susan T. Buffett Foundation. Oh, okay. okay. And then you're on the first And we're on the, we're on the fourth floor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Have you so, been in there? That, I have not. It is really nice. It's got good views. I get invited to the holidays parties. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Love the view. It's uh, it is, it's a, um, it's a, it's a very nice building. Uh, but uh, if, if there was, if there was an opportunity for us to say move to maybe a more economical space, uh, you'd be open. I'm definitely looking to that at the end of the day. I copy uh, that. Is it hard to get to, or? You know, it's funny because like I'm used to the 1301 Harney. Right. I, mean, I, that's what that. I, I grew up. Whether it was it's just easy a, to get a, to a senator working in Omaha, like going to that building. And, and what was her name, Mrs. Haggerty? Of those. Yes, Jackie. Jackie. Jackie was, the, Jackie, yeah. the yeah, she was the, great. She's the director forever. of first impressions. Yeah. Uh, she was the nicest, uh, yeah. welcoming. She was there forever. Welcoming yeah. crew you could have ever had. Uh, and the the building we're in now, it's oh. it's clearly a little bit more security. Uh-huh. Uh, and there's no no one who there's no front desk. Person, so it's yeah. a touch screen. It's a pat touch screen yeah. pad. You got to do it. Sterile. Uh, and I, ironically, um, I've had a number of members come up to me in different events over the last eighty days, saying it'd be really good to bring back like a like a receptionist or someone to welcome people into your building. And I'm like. I just add it to the list. I'm like, oh, yeah, I you're, get it. Makes you're sense. A list. Yes, I was like, that makes sense. I was like, I was used to that too. Uh, yeah. At, at the old uh, 1301 Harney location. So, uh, but you know, I don't think ever replace Jackie Haggerty. He was just such a yeah. such a friendly person. Yeah, uh, she, was she great. Was, I mean, all the from the day I started getting involved in the chamber, I think it was in the 90s. Uh, she was always there. Her son, Steve, went to West Side. Let, let me ask you a question. Just like, what years were you in the state legislature? Uh, 2000, uh, 2009 through the end of 2016. 2009 to the end of 16. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm going to mention that. That can be a kangaroo court sometime nowadays. What's that? That can be a kangaroo court. Yeah. <laughs> the legislature now is not the legislature uh, it was uh, eight years ago, I can tell you that much. Well, decorum in, decorum oh. in America is not yeah. what it was yeah. uh, eight years ago. I just remember growing up, and I don't know much about politics, obviously, 
But I just remember there was there there were fringe groups on on both sides and all sides, and but everybody kind of was civil and got along for the most part, and it just kind of went down the middle. And now that nobody allows it to just be sad, be healthy debate it's not a thing. It feels like things have gotten who can yell the loudest, yeah. <laughs> which is not a good way to or be do the most business. Sensational yes, and yes. outrageous. And, yeah. 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 Fetterman uh, conjugated some sentences. I thought that was interesting. Uh, he's going after his own too, which is which is interesting. The um, so so as far as some of the economic development stuff, we might just kind of like when, when when we used to have David on, we'd always kind of maybe bring up some of the big projects. So um, just like a word or two. Like of course we'll probably bring up like Ten. Mutual Omaha Streetcar. Yeah. yeah. Maybe some of the yeah. big data centers yeah. in Sarpy yeah. County, Crossroads. Stuff. Yeah. 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 Stuff like that. Okay. So all fun. Damnroofing.com. Let's get that fixed. The importance is to be handy. The Rosie Diginozzi is very handy. Every day if you Jeff is handy. on the podcast page under Jim Rose at KFAB.com. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beal sitting next to Trent and Maggot. We're brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DM Roofing and Siding. Dingman's has four metro area locations. Take great care of your car if you need it. And in addition to the body work, they also do mechanical. Well, we are um, pleased to welcome on the new new ish uh, president and CEO of the Greater Omaha Chamber of Commerce, who's been on the job for about 80 days. Heath Mello, welcome to the show. Uh, good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Trenton. Thanks good for morning. having me here. Well, it's good to have you with us, and uh, and congratulations uh, on the new position. You know, you're a Om- longtime Omaha guy and Nebraskan. Uh, you served in the uh, Nebraska State Legislature, the Unicam. For from 2009 to 2016, and so it's kind of like, in a way, your life has been leading you to this job. <laughs> well, it's it's good to be working mostly back in Omaha. I'd say the the last six years, I've I've ventured down to Lincoln, um, serving as a, the vice president for external relations for the University of Nebraska system, and serving as their chief lobbyist down at the Capitol. So that hour drive from Omaha to Lincoln for the past six years, uh, after doing it for eight years as a senator, it's just nice to. Be be back in Omaha, staying in Omaha right now, and being able to to really represent an amazing organization that has such a storied history of of driving big projects in the community, be, and really developing, I think, really critical partnerships uh, to grow our economy and and really help bring prosperity to the region. When we started this show uh, 20 years ago, next week, no, no, uh, next month, month. Yeah. next month, next month, 20 years ago, next month, David Brown was just starting wow. at the chamber, and and so. We kind of grew this with him, and he'd come on quarterly, and and we would bring in the the president and CEO of the chamber, and um, it, it, it's kind of neat, and it's kind of see a homegrown uh, head of it come back, and and um, you didn't expect to get this job. Yeah, you know, Trenton, a couple things there. Look, I didn't realize this is uh, David Brown was the first what was I was told the first kind of professional economic developer hired. Uh, in this role at the chamber, and uh, and and really um, being a, a local Omaha person in this role, we haven't had someone in this in that a local person for for close to forty years uh, in in the chamber job. So it's great to be able to represent my hometown, work here, um, live here, spend all my time here. It's fabulous, um, and uh, there's just a lot of exciting things I think about about what the future holds right now. I've always admired about the chamber where. The the president of the chamber, um, or, or the, the the chairman of the board, is always somebody with a local business, mm-hmm. and it's not the second or third person down the totem pole. It it, it is the CEO mm-hmm. or president of UP of all these huge companies, and so um, we're excited about that. And and Carmen um, has been at that position for a long time. Yeah, no, uh, we've it is a uh, it is a, a very dynamic board of directors. Uh, as you mentioned, CEOs, presidents, principals of of major employers, uh, medium, small sized businesses as well. It brings that executive leadership to the table, um, where where really you can have some very candid conversations, but also 
really help drive some big decisions and big ideas. And I think that is the nice thing. Carmen Tapio, as you mentioned, our chair um, this year will serve as our chair of the board next year. Uh, and that's a, a first in a long time. We typically don't have uh, chairs of the board serve more than a year. I'm grateful for her leadership and her willingness to serve another year. And it really is an opportunity for us to bring in um, you know, Omaha, I don't think a lot of folks realize we have a lot of transition right now in a lot of major CEO president positions, a new president CEO of Blue Cross Blue Shield, Jeff Russell, um, a new president CEO of Valmont, uh, um, Avner Applebaum. Um, we've got folks coming into new roles, new president uh, of UP, uh, Beth Whited. I mean, you have in the course of the 80 days I've been in this role, there's just wow. been a lot of leadership turnover and a lot of major employers in Omaha. And so we're all kind of coming into these roles together. And it's really exciting to be able to to chart the greater Omaha. We don't hold you responsible for that transition, <laughs> but uh, it sounds like you're all growing together. But you, you've got so many wonderful people down there on the yeah. executive committee. Um, there's when I remember that when, when they do the, the the yearly chamber drive or whatever, yep. some of the Jack Deasing I remember he was a, a big player in, in the insurance industry and he called me to just see how we're doing at our company. I thought that was the coolest thing and and for people like that to donate their time. Yeah, no, it's uh, a volunteer. You know, the the volunteer leadership of the board is is really tremendous. Uh, I think when when I when I started in this role 80 days ago. Um, it really, we kind of, it was mind blowing the number of volunteers and chamber members across the spectrum who give time out of, you know, taking time away from running their business, helping grow their company, uh, managing their day in, day out business and career professional life to come volunteer, whether it's helping bring new members in, helping us out with the red ribbon crew of, of cutting, you know, opening opening businesses across the, the greater Omaha area, um, you know, helping going to groundbreakings uh, and helping just do so much work facilitating economic development, public policy work um, that really makes the chamber what it is today. So when a new leader comes into an organization, they always talk about those first three to six months, assessing everything, learn, learning everything you can and starting to, to set your vision. Heath, now that you are nearing the, the three month mark, what's your assessment of where the chamber is right now? What's what's special about it? Uh, where does it need need to go immediately? Well, Jeff, that is a fabulous question, and I'd be remiss, you know, as I came into this role and, and had a number of conversations with, with other Metro Chamber presidents across, across the country, you know, David Brown really was a trailblazer in this role for nearly 20 years, and he, I can't, I can't talk to anybody nationally who doesn't know the work David did um, and how he helped put Omaha on the map in terms of what I say kind of the Chamber of Commerce executive world uh, in terms of just being an innovator uh, of what he did. And um, that being said, you know, trying to build off some of the work David did for nearly two decades has really been kind of my focus. I've been, everyone has said, what's your, what's your vision for the chamber? And, and, and my, my very blunt, very, very candid response is one, to bring clarity back to what I think is the chamber's main mission. Um, economic development separates us from your typical chamber of commerce. And that is our true North Star of an organization is helping drive economic development, growth and prosperity for the region. You know, public policy is the other big thing we do. Um, and representing the voice of business um, is a very, very important role we serve. Uh, and we have to be able to look at that from, I, I think, a very, um, a very uh, thoughtful perspective in terms of what we get engaged in, what we don't get engaged as an organization, because those two things really kind of mesh together. You've got to have a strong business climate through your public policy, whether it's through your city halls, your state capitals, or in Washington, D.C., for you to be able to bring economic development projects or grow existing businesses and opportunities in the region. So those two kind of priorities really drive what I've been talking about to members If we've been exploring our, our opportunities as an organization to make the biggest impact. And the third priority is really kind of modernizing our membership services, of really providing that value proposition to members, whether they're a Union Pacific that's got thousands of employees here in Omaha, or you've got a small, uh, a small entrepreneur who's got three or four people working for their company. Those members all need different things. And it's making sure that the chamber is being member focused in terms of 
really delivering what members need from us in comparison to to maybe what we think would be a really great idea or be really great to focus time and energy on this. It really is putting the member first and really trying to to really see what they want us to be focusing on for them, whether that's helping out with networking, whether that's helping out um, of connecting them with potential customers or, or potential economic development projects, really leaning in in some of that public policy space and on small businesses and you know trying to find ways to reduce that red tape and regulation across the state and, and in local governments, um, focusing on that positive business climate for entrepreneurs. I mean, it's across the spectrum. And I think, you know, that may sound a little bit more of, I, I tell people a back to the future kind of reference of where David Brown had really had, had kind of focused the organization. But, you know, that's the chamber of commerce I grew up in as a state senator, as a community leader, um, of really doubling down on your strengths and economic development, public policy um, really is what made the Greater Omaha Chamber what it is today. And I think um, there's a unique opportunity to take that, that vision and really, really catapult it in the future um, in light of this post-COVID world. And that's exactly what the chamber should do. And there's, there's no organization with a mission. We're not about we, we don't have a lot of members. We have, we have 20,000 subscribers to our newsletter at the Grow Omaha uh, Weekly Market Report. But we're, we're about economic development with a slant towards commercial real estate. But, but it's all about healthy job growth, yes. building companies here, bringing people to Omaha. And, and so I, I thank you for for rececognizing what what the chamber was and 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 is so Heath uh, and let me build on that a little bit you you said that economic development is our North star uh, at the chamber um, given that what is your assessment of the state of economic development in Omaha today uh, you know Jeff uh, and before I do I want to throw a quick plug in Trenton uh, you know even before I came to the chamber I was reading the grow Omaha market report email we love be, it be able to share that to some of my former university colleagues in Lincoln and say hey this is what's happened in Omaha if you ever want to read this is by far the most comprehensive email you could ever read about about really great things happening um, so if your listeners haven't signed up for it they need to um, you know the state of economic development I, I was literally just on a panel on Wednesday um, with a the president CEOs of the North Platte Chamber of Commerce and the Wayne Chamber of Commerce. And the conversation, uh, the panel conversation was the transition from, from chasing smokestacks to chasing people. And um, that is really kind of where the unique kind of, I think the unique pivot is happening right now in economic development. We, we clearly as an organization are still focusing on, on opening up uh, case files for industrial projects. This past year, 2023, we'll, we've opened up so far about 124 files on industrial projects. About 70% of them are new to market. 30% um, are expansions of existing employers. Um, but but what we're seeing in that effort, uh, particularly in the industrial space of, of, of potential projects to Omaha, is that they're, a lot, they're very, very large energy users. And I think the state of economic development, uh, folks aren't paying attention to what's happening right now with our energy, uh, our energy systems, our energy generation. You know, we have a great partnership with LPPD. They are by far our closest economic development teammate uh, in this space, um, looking at big industrial projects or even just big commercial projects um, that would use a lot of energy. Um, that that is truly outside of the chasing people. It's ensuring that you've got the infrastructure, primarily the energy infrastructure, to bring in new growth. And I did not quite, when I started back 80 days ago in this role, I did not realize how critical that energy component was um, in light of what we're seeing with, with fast growing areas, primarily in some of the new green um, EV battery sectors, uh, but even a lot of major advanced manufacturers that are looking to come the energy uses is tremendous. And I think that would be the one thing for your listeners. You know, there's a lot of opportunity for us, I would say, as a region in this space. But it's also something that when OPPD is talking, I hope people are listening. I think it was the old E.F. Hutton. When E.F. Hutton says, you know, when E.F. Hutton talks or says something, people turn around and listen. Yeah. And, and that's kind of the way I emphasize right now with OPPD, uh, because they really are, um, they want to see growth in the region. They want to see uh, further prosperity across across our, our six county area in Nebraska that we serve, um, but that's that's a really unique factor right now in the economic development space. The other point, though, I mentioned talent in people. Um, that was clearly something 
when I took to, took on this role with our executive committee, our board of directors, and a lot of major employers. I've you know been on the road meeting with CEOs and presidents um, pretty much every day in this role, and that clearly is the biggest issue people bring up is Heath. You know, we could expand if we could find more workforce, and we know you've got a unique role of trying to drive commercial development, industrial development, uh, but we need you really to be thinking strategically of what the future looks like to bring more people to Omaha. And that really is something we're looking at in 2024 is looking at a national marketing campaign to really highlight you know, the opportunities in Omaha, the job opportunities, the career opportunities, you know, hearing you and Trent talk a little bit about the placemaking that's been done by, you know, the leadership from Mayor Stothert, the leadership from the philanthropic and business community the last eight years, particularly you've seen a lot of amazing things that uh, can attract people to come here. We now have to be able to go out to different cities across the, the country and really try to remind their existing residents why moving to Omaha and you starting your career here is going to be the best decision you can make. Music to our ears, uh, Heath, because uh, we too talk to so many leaders of so many companies that say we just can't uh, get enough workers. And, and, and so it's so critical for us to um, draw talented, hardworking people to the community. This conversation is off to a great start. We're going to take our middle of the show break. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking to Heath Mello about some of the big projects that are going on in town right now. So many development projects. There'll be a lot to talk about and only a little bit of time to do it. But you are listening to Grow Omaha. We're brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DNM Roofing and Siding. We'll be back after this on News Radio 1110 KFAB. So, I, this isn't a, a, a unique idea, but I've been kind of <clears throat> oh, here it comes talking about it. Here, I'm going to go back to the Omaha calendar. Here, com here it comes. <laughs> We've heard this one before. I'm going to go back to OmahaCalendar.com from 15 years ago. I own OmahaCalendar.com. But anyway, with all with all the with Heritage Omaha and public private partnerships, all the money, all the stakeholders, there, there should be something. And, and Brenda Harding was talking about maybe you do something like a. Uh, your income tax, like your income tax is held steady for five years, whatever. What I think, and I don't know, you'd know better as a legislator is, let's say it's a 10000 to $30,000 forgivable loan. Mm -hmm. You come to move to Omaha and you work for so long, that loan's forgiven, okay? It's been done before around the country. Yes. Has it been done successfully, do we know? It has, and we're actually, Trent, you're ahead of the curve, because that's an idea that we are, the governor's looking at, we're looking at, everyone's looking at it. How do you do a $10,000 kind of tax rebate, tax credit for people to say, you're moving here from somewhere else, you're here, and that five-year number has been kind of the, the thing, which is for five years. Five years, we're gonna give you a $2,000 a year credit for five years. Um, uh, your, your, your state income taxes uh, to try to drive people here. I mean, so ironically, you uh, Little Rock, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas has done this as a city where they're giving people ten, a $10,000 grant to move to Little Rock and the city of Little Rock in partnership with philanthropic partners, business partners, are just saying, hey, we're gonna cover $10,000 of your moving expenses to move here, get you situated with your first couple months of rent, um, and that's what we're trying to explore. Do like, they have to stay on? Do they have how long? They do. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing. Like a five year. It's a yeah, five year window. Uh, and it's just like how you know. So we're looking like you have a city that's doing that. You know, we're looking at it from the state legislative perspective. And you well. Go Governor Pillen's looking at it too in the sense of you know while you know Omaha probably is a little easier to bring people from other places. I mean, I think the governor's looking at it like how do you bring people to Kearney? How do you bring yeah. people to Columbus? How do you how do you do this statewide so that you could bring people from other states to want to move? and fill some pretty vacant, some pretty important vacant what jobs. What Jeff and I have talked about is, when, in talking to recruiters and everything, they, they say it's, it's really hard to get people to move to Omaha, but once they're, they're here, it's almost impossible to get them to move out. Mm -hmm. So that's great. I mean, that's, that's what we need. It's, it's sticky in a good way. But, but yeah, and like you said, we're in Omaha, we're doing generally over the last couple of decades pretty darn good job of, of, of attracting people because we've had net population yes. gain most yes. years around 1%. Yeah. Puts us in the top half of the 100 largest yes. metros. But the problem is with all of these great businesses we have, uh, it's not enough. Yeah. And we need to be more like a one and a half percent. Yeah. That, it's it's the, the population yeah. growth. Uh, any idea right now, I, I've told everybody, any idea to bring more people here 
the chamber, I've told every every audience everywhere I go, I was like, the chamber's all ears in terms of any idea to bring more people here right now. We've got we've got to be thinking outside the box a little bit. One thing too, I think we we could uh, we could do, and this is kind of being done, I suppose. But I've been thinking lately that this whole Dodge corridor that we're creating is is becoming kind of special and maybe unique uh, among midwestern cities. We're almost developing this linear ten mile downtown. Mm -hmm. And and you, and you think about okay, so we just put in, if you count Steelhouse Omaha, Tenasca Center, and 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 the Kiewit Luminarium, six hundred million dollars of public attractions yes. in a two two and a half year period right there in the core, and then you figure okay, the streetcar and the connectivity it'll bring, uh, and, and make it so easy for entertainment and, and, and socializing all that sort of thing. Um, is there a way that we can kind of couch? The linear core of Omaha is a unique place. Like someone, I had uh, a guy from Des Moines uh, that I had lunch with, and uh, he made some comment about that. He's like, God, he's like, you guys are doing so much more in your downtown than we are, and then your downtown just keeps going to the west. To the west. And I was like, I've been thinking the same thing. It's uh, Jeff. I've heard more and more people mention, and they pretty much mentioned kind of the West Dodge corridor from Hartwood Preserve West, and they're yeah. like, Hey, you're seeing just growth it's nonstop up, yeah. along from west of 132nd. Mm -hmm. To 204, and um, and I think it's just more of I've got a I'm in a unique role where I've got a you know we'll chat maybe a little about the urban core project the urban core itself and that being kind of a driving factor for the mayor for the city for the chamber the philanthropic community but I've been saying look we've also got to be mindful that the core I mean the growth is a long dodge I mean the it spine, is right. the spine is growing very strong very fast I mean Avenue One is probably the last <coughs> big project out there and I met with them recently and they they're like look we're we're all halfway full of what our you know our couple hundred acre development was going to be um, outside of what Hartwood Preserve uh, which is finishing up their growth a little bit I mean it, it's just going to be as what's next along what's what's next along West Dodge I mm -hmm. guess that's probably the the biggest thing is is there anything else that we're missing along the way at some point people are going to How much time uh, 145. People are going to talk about Old Mill at some point. I'm convinced that, that the old mill, oh, yeah. old mill development is going to be a redevelopment of Old Mill is perhaps the next big thing. It it just, call, change the, the new mill? Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, it could be. I mean, something, I mean, it just, I mean, that is a stable and stable environment um, from a commercial perspective. The, the transportation infrastructure, getting there and getting around, um, people are talking more and more about, um, as you think through that West Dodge area, that, that's what I would naturally think, because you've got now 72nd with the new library, Crossroads, I mean, mm -hmm. it's that's in between 132nd to there, it's, it's Old think Mill. Just when I mean, uh, all these transit-oriented developments, and then it, when cars become autonomous, and, and they're shrinking parking lots, and, and people are just getting picked up all over the place, ride-sharing, whatever yeah. the hell it is, think about how that can just make these buildings go up yeah my, my son he's a high school senior and he does all this travel for deca and mm -hmm. entrepreneur contests and all that stuff and he was flying into houston a couple weeks ago and he texts me he's like dad houston's so cool they've got more than one downtown when you when you, you're coming in you look around there's all these downtowns all over houston and i said to him i said if you think about it on a smaller scale we're kind of doing that yeah. here yeah because you've got downtown is a downtown 30. midtown's a downtown med center's a downtown and then Crossroads is becoming down. Crossroads. And then I thought I mentioned Old Mill. I'm like, where TD Merritt or Charles Schwab is, there's going to be a lot of high rises out there in the future. That's interesting because we we're starting to get. We're downtown. starting to see that too. Yeah. All right. Well, so we'll talk about a lot of these projects. So this will be about projects. This break getting bigger. Things like that. What, what's that? It's like three minute break or something. And the news takes so long. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beal sitting next to Trenton Maggot. We're brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center, along with D&M Roofing and Siding, the top-notch commercial and residential roofing provider uh, in eastern Nebraska and western Iowa. Uh, we are, uh, we've got our turn, or rather our uh, Noddle Company's commercial real estate development spotlight of the week coming up. And uh, for this one, uh, we want to draw our attention to uh, one of Noddle Company's best known 
known developments. That's Exarban Village. And today and tomorrow, the Physicians Mutual Holiday Market going on from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., both today and tomorrow, like I said. But this holiday market reminds me of a tradition in Europe, the Christmas market. Like so many of these big cities in Europe have these Christmas markets that are they're these big outdoor holiday festivals with all this, you know, Christmas oriented food, winter food, and, and they're a lot Warm of fun. Tents. And people people even travel from the US and Asia to these European cities just for the Christmas markets. And so it's cool to see Exarban Village kind of playing up that theme. If, if I were you, ladies and gentlemen, stop by. I think uh, the Beals family is going to pop in after church tomorrow and, and walk around and, and check it out. And that's going on at Exarban Village. And Noddle Companies which is one of our key sponsors here, you need to know about this firm. They are in the business of making places. They're they're famous for headquarters buildings, you know, like Valmont and so many other headquarters buildings that they've done lately. And then places, Exarban Village, River's Edge, uh, the Builders District in North Downtown, and, and so many more. You can find out more about them at noddlecompanies.com. Well, we have Heath Mello with us, President and CEO of the Greater Omaha Chamber. And, and Heath, we want to talk a a little bit about some of the big development projects, and in Omaha, you always have to start with the urban core. Um, it seems like every time you drive through the urban core, you see a, another project, but it stretches basically from the Missouri River out a little bit past the Med Center and just kind of a couple miles north or south. But what's uh, what's your assessment of our urban core right now? Well, you know, Jeff, I, I would tell you, I, I heard you mention earlier uh, the riverfront development, which, you know, when you when you spend uh, and invest um, almost a half a billion dollars in redeveloping a, a true placemaking environment for, for pedestrians, for visitors, um, for residents uh, to be able to, to go spend time uh, at the old Gene Leahy Mall, the Heartland America Park, the Lewis and Clark Landing, um, that's a great setup for future growth. Um, and the urban core, you know, when I started in this role, um, I had to clearly do a lot of, a lot of reading, a lot of develop, a lot of, uh, a lot of transition reading in terms of what's been happening over the last couple of years. And when the chamber released the urban core strategy back in uh, March of 2022, you know, there were 11 big projects, 11 big moves as we call them to really try to drive this goal of 30,000 residents and 30,000 jobs in the urban core by 2040. And you're seeing some of that work happen as we speak. I heard you mention a little earlier the West End with the UNMC campus, um, some of the work they're doing clearly with their new buildings um, that's going to allow them to continue to grow their employee base. You have some new housing. There was recently a new housing project driven by Burlington Capital Group uh, right off there off 48th and Dodge, uh, the former Pittman uh, veterinary yeah. site, uh, which is one of the going to be one of the taller high rise um, um, apartments uh, in uh, in condo uh, living units uh, in the urban core. Um, you then make your way east a little bit. You see that growth happening, you know, um, across that spectrum. Uh, the builders district clearly with uh, with more jobs that are going to come in that space. Um, the mutual of Omaha skyscraper, which will clearly add a new level. Uh, of of excitement for Omaha skyline as we bring in visitors uh, to the to the urban core, and then you you see sites that are looking to be developed. And I think that's for us as a chamber probably the most exciting aspect is you have all this great work that's being done. You know we've got a role to play as part of our our strategy moving forward is really helping identify the sites that can get redeveloped because that is and then to some extent making sure working with public entities the city MUD OPPD. Uh, to make sure those sites uh, are are site ready, uh, we do this work across the region with a lot of greenfield development sites. Uh, and doing urban redevelopment is different, uh, and we know that process is going to require us to be more innovative. We're going to have to find ways to ensure we're investing in that those parking lots to make sure that they're ready for a developer or commercial real estate firm to come in and help do something big. And that's really where the future is right now, is that we are driving that that effort with our partnerships with the city, the development community, to really try to make sure we hit that 30,000 resident, 30,000 job goal by 2040. One of those projects, though, 
um, that are is absolutely critical to the core is the streetcar. Uh, I know the modern streetcar, the mayor and I did a press conference recently with HDR highlighting some of the design work that's going uh, in front of the, the commission uh, that's going to review that design throughout the process. Um, anyone who's been to another city with what I would say a modern transportation system, um, everyone can agree that having transit like that, uh, a modern streetcar, is great in terms of moving residents and visitors around an area of their city. I recently was in Kansas City uh, earlier, and uh, the, the streetcar in Kansas City, you can see the growth, you see the development, you see the excitement, you see how it's now it's integrated fully into the Kansas City downtown area, and they're expanding it, and they're gonna grow their streetcar lines in Kansas City with the help of the federal government, which you will only see more economic growth and development. And so uh, it's exciting to see that what the city's been able to do with the streetcar project. Um, the opportunities to connect it, I think, in the future to the UNMC campus with the Saddle Creek campus you mentioned, um, the, the, the Project Health, uh, Project Next as it was formerly known, all of that <coughs> connecting uh, to the streetcar. Recently, we had a, a press conference a couple weeks ago um, uh, with the groundbreaking of the, the Baby Bob Bridge, where now you can be in Council Bluffs and walk over directly to the CHI Center for entertainment purposes or TD Ameritrade or Charles Schwab Field, I'm sorry, um, it, it, and take the streetcar essentially from UNMC down over to CHI and walk over to Council Bluffs in one fell swoop. It's gonna change the placemaking opportunity for us to recruit, once again, that talent, those those residents to the Omaha area with that kind of transit connected to, to really major, not just private sector development, but also that placemaking work that that's really critical. One of the sites that there's, there's a number of sites. You've got the old UP site that that the the city owns again. You've got the the Civic District, which White Lotus has got cool plans that they're showing there. But you also have the Mutual of Omaha campus, which is a big piece of redevelopment area. And has there been any talks about what's going to happen with that, with the, with the streetcar going by that? Yes, uh, Trent. That is a, that is a that's been a hot topic. Uh, a lot more uh, in terms of what the future of the current Mutual of Omaha uh, campus uh, would look like in the future. You know, I, I know in in terms of some development circles, I think housing really is looking at yeah. that transition from from um, office retail or office space uh, to to more of that residential spaces where everything, all the conversations I've been involved in, that's where everything's leading. And that will help us um, try to achieve some of that high rise uh, residential development that we know we have to be able to create in the core to be able to bring to bring that density that we need. So um, that's something that uh, we're definitely. I mean, I can say this. Um, you know, the the chamber board of directors uh, is going to be getting a briefing on a new urban core housing recommendation report here, um, and uh, in December, and that's going to help drive some of the work with the city, uh, the development community, uh, and really trying to, to to build those partnerships of thinking outside the box of how we're going to have to to drive more residential uh, more residential growth uh, in the urban core in the next next 17 years. Awesome. Well, well, the, the bad news, Heath, is we're about out of time. Okay. But uh, this just means that we're going to have to have you come back uh, maybe later this winter. And uh, because there's so much happening and it's moving so fast, we're going to have to keep doing some updates. Are you game? I'm game. Absolutely, Jeff. Thanks again. This was a great opportunity to spend time with you. And Trenton, as a, as a, as a, a listener of the program, as someone who reads your emails, I, I just uh, can't thank you enough for the work you do of helping tell Omaha's story uh, and helping share the important information that's happening happening in the, in the commercial real estate space, particularly uh, across the region. Well, we appreciate that, yeah. and uh, I wish you the very best of success in, in this still new role as, as president and CEO of the Greater Omaha Chamber. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Heath Mello, uh, your new chamber chief. And uh, when we come back, we'll have our Turner Construction Lightning Round looking at the list, and there's a lot of things on it. Uh, you're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DM Roofing and Siding on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Can you, I don't, I, my phone's in the car. Can you text on me? Sir. Thank you. Yeah. Your contact? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Actually, I think maybe I have, I think I thought I have some cards. New cards. Card. <laughs> but I put my cell on there. So I think it's the biggest Thank thing is text. Very much. I, 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 the email's You're fine, but I, I, it's just text. It's easier because yeah. I get. 
I'm, I'm, right. I'm getting spammed by I'm yeah. getting spammed by like every company in the country who's like, hey, we want to come work on your website well, or yeah, yeah. have you ever thought about getting a new phone service? And it's like no, it never occurred to me. It's like yeah, welcome to the gym. It's a great sure, yes. Uh, so I've got I've got time. I have no kids. I'm 54 years old, and, and so if, if there was some kind of a committee or a project... Get involved. Okay. Need it. I need it. Okay, I, I'll I, text my stuff. We, we, so something to be thinking about. So we're going to restart. I mean, we're going to restart a developer's council for the urban core. Oh, good. Like, we have to... Like, there's no way... I've told everyone, like, there is absolutely no way the chamber with, with between, you know, Mark Norman, Winsley, myself, you know, and, and maybe a couple other folks... We can't, we got to have the development community yeah. and the commercial real estate community help drive a lot of the opportunities that can be. Remember they were called tags? Yeah. I was on I the was on, I was retail on the tag. I was on the headquarters tag. What, it, was, it was Target? So Target advisory. advisory Group. Yeah. And, and, we, and we've yeah. got, and we're, we're trying to do a different model of that. But the, develop, the, the yeah. developers council is, is something that you're going to get, you're on it. Bingo. Yeah. There it is. It's done. It's Thank done. you. It's done. It's, 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 it's over. It's da, done. Da, 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 da. Uh, Wait, what do I have to do? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's only a $10,000 donation. No, it, it, it's really, it's more of like, this done. is, this is a, uh, the urban core work is, is something that's so big. It's on video. Uh, it, it's, we're going to need, it's an all hands approach right now. That's why. Okay. I remember with the, with, with the tags that Steve Martin from Blue Cross Blue Shield was the head of the, I mean, like, his job was to like bring his competitors to Omaha. I, I, I just how, thought that it was so selfless. That's how much I mean, they cared. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was cool. Yeah, I was on the headquarters tag, and we would like go uh, uh, to cities where we went to Home Depot or something. Yeah, and, and uh, FDR. You were like a, Thank yes. a Thankathon or something. Yeah, I did like three or four of them, mm -hmm. and they were a blast because there'd be like a bunch of Omaha uh, business leaders, and we'd go just meet with headquarters. Yes. And, I mean, it was useful but fun yeah. as well. So, yeah. All right. Great job. You can stick around or you, or you can go and do your thing. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Keels and Trenton Magad are here. And it is time for your Turner Construction Lightning Round, appropriately brought to you by Turner Construction. They are building Omaha, the uh, changing Omaha's built environment from big projects like Offutt Air Force Base facilities and Sarpy County Data Center to your project, whether that is uh, a new office building or renovating your current office building or building out your retail space. Uh, Turner Construction does it all. What we like to say about Turner is that they have a deep bench. You know, it's one of the nation's world's biggest construction companies. So the resources are there. The bench is there. Uh, the talent and experience is there. And, and that can give you peace of mind if you're using them as your contractor. But on the other hand, Turner Nebraska is a local construction company with local people that intimately know this market, are very proud of it, and work very hard at it. So we thank Turner Construction for bringing this to you, and we happily happily recommend them if you're looking for a contractor. So uh, here, Trenton, here we go. The Lazy Leopard Cocktail Bar and Lounge plans to open soon in the former Cool Greens restaurant space, 36 and Farnham in the Blackstone District. Do you remember the Lazy Leopard Lounge? <laughs> Do I remember it? I went to it. Yeah, I've gone to it with you at, at the New Tower. <laughs> yeah, by the when you and I were in our 20s and and uh, going to the bar scene, it was kind of. Uh, dated and on its way out and it was kind of fun to go there just it was so retro in a really honest not on purpose way right <laughs> uh, but it's long gone this is a new iteration i guess i presume different owners but who knows uh, wiener schnitzel the premium hot dog brand coming to town is believed to be in lease negotiations to occupy in cap space of a soon to be built uh, retail building northeast of 72nd and grover it'll be joined by a second location of Salty Dog, a Council Bluff sports bar. That's also my pet name for Jeff, by the way, Wiener Snistle. <laughs> That's a new one. I hadn't heard it before. I'm not sure I'll necessarily embrace that. Chipotle Mexican Grill opened a Gretna location earlier this week in front of the High V store at 192nd and Highway 370. And apparently, uh, wieners are a theme right now because the former Stoysich House of Sausage building, uh, just northeast of 132nd Center, has been done demolished. It's gone. Just dirt there. Plans call for a restaurant to be called Hot Pot 88 uh, to eventually be built on the site. 
The walls have gone up for Nebraska's first Hawaiian Brothers Island Grill next to an existing Holiday Inn Express and Tidal Wave car wash in Wick's South Point development southwest of I-80 and Highway 370. This is out of Kansas City, has 46 locations. I pers- I've never been to one, but I can't wait. I love those poke they have bowls. fried uh, spam, too. I don't know if I'll have that, but I'll definitely go for a poke bowl. Good good uh, street cred, though. I want to try Hawaiian Brothers. If you're a fan of Little Ricky's Rooftop Bar in the Blackstone, Blackstone District, good news. You can go there even when it is cold because they have installed clear plexiglass walls and outdoor heaters. We have a couple of retail moves at L Street Marketplace, uh, northwest of 120th and L Street. Keyboard Castle, which had been in an inline space between Old Navy and Ross Dress for Less, has moved into a building closer to L Street, right next to Jason's Deli, if you can picture that place. And then Bath and Body Works is going to backfill the former keyboard castle space early next year. Mexico, or rather, Maple 88 Mexican Kitchen and Cantina uh, at uh, 2822 North 88th Street has changed its name to Pueblito Bonito. Same ownership, same menu. Yep, we need more Mexican restaurants, I've always said. I love Mexican restaurants, and I also love Asian cuisine. Good thing, because Happy Buddha's Asian Cuisine will celebrate its grand opening next Tuesday at 36, uh, or rather 3608 Twin Creek Drive in Bellevue. Our good friend and colleague at NAINP Dodge, Brian Thomas, did that deal. Excellent, can't wait to try it. Shout out to our friend Brian Thomas. Site grading, <laughs> or site preparation and grading has started for a future Jensen Tire and Auto location in Gretna, northeast of 186th and Highway 370. And then um, we also try to keep you update with some of the, the closings. The Corner Kick Sports Bar has closed its 162nd and West Maple Road location. If you're a fan, don't worry, though, because the 132nd and Dodge and the 138th and P locations do remain open open. Um, construction, a lot of construction in Hartwood Preserve. Several people have asked us, hey, what are all those buildings there? Lots of restaurants, shops, and retail. The music's playing, though, so we can't give you too many details about it, but you can find out more on the Gromaha newsletter. Just go to gromaha.com and click on Market Report in the navigation bar. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center, d Roofing and Siding, and Turner Construction will chat with you next week at 9 o'clock right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Bum, bum, bum. See you. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media, this is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.